Hello, and welcome back to Chat the Brain with Dr. Ghislaine. I'm Dr. Christine Ghislaine, board certified clinical neuropsychologist. Okay, in today's video, I have three questions to answer for you. The first question is, what is a neuropsychologist? The second question is, why does anybody need a neuropsychologist? Or when does somebody go to seek out a neuropsychologist? And the third question is, okay, once you go through and you seek out a neuropsychologist, what's the benefit or what does one gain from working with a neuropsychologist? I'm hoping in the video today to answer these three questions. Okay, so let's begin. Question one, what is a neuropsychologist? So a neuropsychologist is a clinical psychologist by training. This means that they have completed a master's and a doctorate in clinical psychology. We are not medical doctors, we are not MDs, and therefore the vast majority of clinical neuropsychologists do not prescribe medication. We are behaviorally focused, and I'll get into a lot more of what that means in a moment. After completing a doctorate in clinical psychology, a clinical neuropsychologist completes a two-year postdoctoral, or after the doctorate, fellowship. And really that is a place where they focus on, ooh, here comes a phrase, the brain bases of behavior. So what does that mean? Basically, the brain is involved in everything that we do, from how we think, to the language that we speak, our ability to articulate that language, our motor movements or our physical movements, the way we feel, our personality, you name it, the brain is involved in it. And therefore, neuropsychologists are interested in quantifying, or also known as measuring, those behaviors to better understand, are they pretty typical for an individual, for their age and their gender? Are they above and beyond what one would expect of their brain functioning? Or is it a little bit lower? Therefore, they might need some assistance, remediation, or support. So how does a clinical neuropsychologist gain the expertise in brain bases of behavior? Oftentimes, clinical neuropsychologists focus on assessment courses. So again, quantifying behavior, understanding human behavior, and how to measure it. The second area is often more on the neurological side. So courses in neuroanatomy and better understanding those physical aspects of the brain, the brain processes that impact and guide our behavior. Beyond graduate coursework, the internship, which is a clinical year of training, as well as the fellowship, which is for neuropsychologists two years as opposed to one year, really focused on being in a setting and providing neuropsychological services. So oftentimes this is in an academic medical setting where folks who come in with acute neurological injury or something that very recently happened to their brain or impacted their brain functioning are coming to seek treatment. Oftentimes a neuropsychologist is part of that care team. The one other point that I'll make here in talking about neuropsychologists and their areas of expertise is if and when you are looking for a neuropsychologist, it is extremely important to think about finding someone who is board certified in clinical neuropsychology. I will have an entire video on why that's important, what that all means, what's the process of being board certified, why does that make that individual any more knowledgeable than another. I will have a video on that that is coming soon but I will throw out there for now that it is important to think about finding a clinical neuropsychologist who is boarded in neuropsychology through the American Board of Professional Psychology. So, question number two, why does somebody need a neuropsychologist or what are the reasons that someone would seek out neuropsychological services? When I think about that, I think about three main categories of people that often seek neuropsychological evaluations. The first one is more information that I alluded to earlier those who have had an acute neurological insult. All that means is recently they sustained some sort of trauma to their brain or something has impacted their brain and now they are functioning differently. Or they wanna make sure and better understand how they're functioning differently. Those types of cases are somebody who just recently had a stroke or somebody who might have been hit in the head or got a traumatic brain injury or somebody who might have had a surgical resection, somebody who had a brain tumor removed. How do these changes to the brain impact day-to-day -day functioning? A neuropsychologist would be able to measure that and provide information as well as support in terms of what are the next steps. The second group of people that I think about when I think about those who might seek out a neuropsychological evaluation are those who have a developmental condition that has impacted the way that their brain has grown and matured over time. 
So for example, someone who is born premature, let's say at 30 weeks gestation, they're born with a whole variety of differences because they weren't quite cooked um, to 40 weeks. That said, they're living wonderful lives and they're thriving beautifully, but maybe there are some areas and we certainly know that being born early impacts the way that the brain develops over time. So if there are areas of difficulty or there are things that families notice as a child who's born premature grows and develops, a neuropsychologist can come in and say, here's our understanding of why is this impacting, is this consistent with what we would expect, first of all, why is this impacting this child and how can we support this child and help them succeed. Another frequent diagnosis that often comes through our office is potentially for concerns for an autism spectrum diagnosis. So individuals who might, you know, families who might notice that their child is limited in their eye contact or has difficulties with social interaction and social reciprocation. You know, these individuals might come seek a neuropsychologist to do a comprehensive evaluation to better understand, does my child have an autism spectrum disorder? Where on this spectrum do they fall? And how can I best support them going forward? The third and final category that kind of comes to mind when I think about the types of patients that I see are those who have realized they are struggling. They're struggling in certain areas or something has come up that they are having difficulty with their day-to-day -day life. So on a child perspective, I think about kids who have difficulties focusing and paying attention. The parents often bring their child in and say, He's, he's driven by a motor. He can't stop. He doesn't sit still. How do I get him to sit and focus? You know, homework is a nightmare. We have such difficulties getting through things. Um, he can't complete a task. Okay, so oftentimes that is a common thing that we see. We do a complete neuropsychological evaluation. We understand whether or not this child has an ADHD or attention deficit hyperactivity diagnosis. And then we plan supports. What can we do to get this child, you know, to their best potential and succeeding in all the ways that we know that they can succeed? On the other end of that spectrum, I think about individuals who might be coming in with concerns for, you know, their memory, or maybe they're concerned that they might have dementia, or maybe their mother or father had Alzheimer's and they're noticing that they're starting to forget things. Certainly this is an area where a neuropsychologist can complete an evaluation to better understand is your memory functioning or your abilities, are they where we would expect? Are they a little bit above or below? And if they are a little bit below, how can we support you going forward? You know, oftentimes those are folks who do benefit from an early evaluation to better understand what's going on. And for our third and final question, what is gained from a neuropsychological evaluation? Perhaps some of that information has been made clear by question one and question two. First and foremost, you get an understanding of how your brain is working. We better understand from soup to nuts, if your brain does it, we look at it, and therefore, is your brain working pretty typically, exactly where we would expect? Are you having difficulties in this area or that area? What's going on? So you really get a snapshot of how your brain is working. The other thing you get is an understanding of your areas of strength, which we all have, and your areas of weakness, which we all have. So better understanding how, you know, I can use my strengths, to build and support my areas of weakness, that is what we are looking to do. The other component of a neuropsychological evaluation or the benefit that you receive is that list of recommendations at the end. I consider a neuropsychological evaluation the foundation from which a support plan is created. So helping families understand, okay, here is where you're functioning, here are those areas of difficulty, but here are the strengths that you have that can be used to boost those areas of difficulty. And here is how I re recommend that you do that. Oftentimes I think that you know families come in concerned about a loved one or themselves and really want that answer of what can I do? And my job as a neuropsychologist is to give them that roadmap. This is what you're doing. This is what we're looking at. Um, and it's a really rewarding component of the job that um, I certainly very much enjoy. So I hope in today's video you now understand what is a neuropsychologist, why does somebody go seek out a neuropsychologist, and what's the benefit or what can be gained from having a neuropsychological evaluation. So now that we have that understanding, I will tell you that the next video is going to be what does the neuropsychological evaluation look like? So now we've signed up and decided, okay, I'm ready, I'm going to go for that neuropsychological evaluation. What does that mean? What does that look like? And what can I expect? Stay tuned! because that question will be answered in my next video.